<laughs> Sorry, Rice. All righty. Hello, humans. Hi, people. Uh, this is the intern. Hi. This is Nikki. I'm and Nikki. We're going to do this video. I don't know what it's going to amount to, and I'm sorry that the editing process is probably really going to suck. Rice, that's on you. Huh. So everybody, I've had a bunch of questions asking about, like, um, about business. How do you start your business? Where, when did you start? Et cetera, et cetera. So... Nikki has to ask some questions for her internship program, mm -hmm. and I thought maybe you guys might want to hear the answers to these questions as well, because it's about business um, and how terrible I am at it. <laughs> Welcome to the David Show! <laughs> Yay! All right. All right. So, question number one. Question number one. Can you tell me about the background and history of this organization? So, I opened Blue Tile 17 years ago, September 20th, 2001. Um, I did so because I've been skateboarding most of my life and I wasn't doing anything with skateboarding. So, yeah, I just, uh, I was living in Salt Lake City and I thought I'm gonna move back to Columbia and open a skate shop. And for a while, it, it took me a while to get into it. It took me a while to do it because another store opened a month before I moved back to do it. And I'm mm. like, damn, I didn't want to open up in someone else's territory. So it took me a while for that shop to just be like, yeah, they're just not doing it. Yeah. So, I, so I decided to do that. Um, so some negatives about like, I'm going to open a skate shop and I'm just going to do it because I've been skateboarding for, I think at the time I've been skating for almost 20 years. Now we're at like 33 or 34 years or something like that. But what I didn't have was business training. You yeah. know, like I, I came in to open a shop with no idea really like how, to run, how to run a shop or how to mark things up. I thought like a consumer. So like when you think like a consumer, you're like, low, low prices. Mm -hmm. Oh, low price. Cut the price. Cut the price. Yeah. You don't realize like, for instance... I have four bills due this week that are twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Woohoo! So the consumer doesn't think that that business owner owes twelve thousand right. dollars in bills, and that's only four of them. Yeah. And that's just due this week. So like you don't think about that. So when I first opened, I came in swinging with like, I'm just gonna mark everything ten percent off suggested retail. Yeah. It actually hurt me climbing. So. That's a little bit of the history. Maybe I wish that I, in some ways, I'm like, I wish I went to business school yeah. to learn these things mm -hmm. because I made some really expensive mistakes. But then when I add up those expensive mistakes, a lot of times they don't equal the value <laughs> that it would have cost me to go to college. <laughs> so I'm like, True. maybe I did a good thing <laughs> by not going to college, right. which is not what any professor wants to hear. Mm -hmm. But, you know... I made some expensive mistakes. Did it cost me $30,000? I don't think so. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of other things have cost money, but right. But the mistakes I made, I think, you know, if you're passionate about what you're doing, you you figure out, you figure the process out along the way. So, yeah, yeah that For was, sure. that was the end of question one. <laughs> Ding. Ding. Okay, so, so um, well, pretty much like who are your customers? Who shops here? So it used to be a super easy, very easy question. Um, it used to just be, I opened for skateboarding, so it was skateboarders. And when I opened 17 years ago, a few people may have bought something online, but for the most part, nobody was shopping online. Yep. So we had huge, huge hits for like back to school and Christmas shopping, you know, like, so... And that was just skateboarders. Yeah. You know, if you wanted a skateboard or if you were curious about skateboarding or you thought like little Timmy might like a skateboard for Christmas, you just went locally and got it. So we would literally have lines out the door for Christmas because the internet wasn't there. Yeah. Now that the internet's there, it's really hard to put your finger on who your customer is. Yeah. Because even your skateboarder is like, oh, but you know, you didn't have this style of shoe. So I got it there. But it's cool that I bought it somewhere else because you don't carry it. Right. Well, it's not cool. It's still one less shoe that I'm going to sell that month. But so, And it used to be a skateboarder came in and they shopped what you had in their size. Yeah. And they bought something because they didn't, 
they just weren't going to buy online. Mm -hmm. Now, like, the choices are infinite. You can buy them anywhere. And if you don't hit every mark, it gets really hard. So that has watered down our skate customers so much that skate brands are struggling, like skate footwear brands are struggling. And sportswear brands have, like, come in, like Nike and Converse and Adidas and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And when that first happened, that was another easy demographic sneakerheads you know so it was like skateboarders and sneakerheads yeah two easy demographics to put your hands on and then now i think on the news they say every year internet sales have gone up by 20 something percent you yeah. know every year since i've been in business i'm like mm. well damn how much more percent is there yeah and we're feeling that so like a lot of our customers are just like you know, oh, I walked by and I saw these cool Adidas. Yeah. Or I walked by and I saw these cool Nikes or, you know, and we don't get like a lot of really, what's the word I'm looking for? Not diverse. The opposite of, we don't get that very specific sale anymore. Where yeah. It's like, I'm a skater. I identify as a skater mm -hmm. and I'm going to buy something from the skate shop. Right. Of course, we have our core our buddies our friends and all that stuff but the people that have like been coming here yeah but outside of that it is really hard to put our finger on who our customer is yeah other than men's fashion mm -hmm. which as you know <laughs> oftentimes offends ladies that uh -huh. we don't have a, a broad for ladies a broad array when i first opened i did carry women's stuff yeah. and it tanked hard right because women don't make up a very large proportion of this industry yeah. It's growing. And I'm psyched on that, but you buy proportionately for each market, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard. We're a menswear store. I hope to grow more into supporting that woman skateboarder. But, yeah. dude, it's hard to even address our our men, yeah. our boys, our guys, our dude skaters. Yeah. It's hard to address All anyone anymore. Else. So. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So I wish I had a better answer for you. Our customers are super broad now. Broad, very broad. Not very yeah. specific. Um, well, what about who are your competitors? So that's another internet challenge. You know, like everyone's like, we'll sell online. Well, we do. Yeah. Who are you going to compete with online? Think about that. Yeah. Everyone. Mm -hmm. You you level the, you don't level the playing field. You just wipe it out. You know, yeah. like nobody. No small businessman is like, hell yeah, internet sales, because it's hard to compete with the big, big, whatever, the big brands or the yeah. big online stores, the, the big dot coms. So our biggest, our biggest um, competition, sadly, are the brands that we sell mm -hmm. because people are buying them direct, you know? Right. So like how much as a, as a shop that carries God, we used to carry hundreds of brands. Now we probably have 50 brands. Mm. But as a shop that carries 50 brands with pretty much no marketing budget and only social media, mm. we have to tell that story for every brand that we carry. Yeah. How hard is that? Right. That's really hard. And under no circumstance at all, if you're trying to tell the story of 50 brands, there is no way you're going to compare to the person that's only trying to sell their brand right and if they're selling direct to consumer that's who's going to win that sale because they only have to focus on themselves mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be like hey we got these new adidas hey we got these new dc oh we got these new converse ah it gets watered down but those guys only have to advertise for themselves so yeah, yeah. so our biggest competitors are the brands we carry which i think is probably the and i guess the second part of it is like where do you rank among competition oh man so where do we rank i think in the eyes of some of our locals and dude we have fans all over the place thank you guys it's crazy we have fans like in the weirdest places in the world or the best places in the world whatever all over the world and i think to those people we rank really high yeah you know so they're like man blue tile is the best mm. but that's such a small it's such a specific customer, yeah. you know, like we're never going to rank very high on the Nike customers radar, right. 
except the Nike customer that's like really hyped on blue tile. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or the Adidas yeah. customer that's mm-hmm. anyway, it doesn't matter what, what brand it is, they're not we're not gonna really have much of a ranking on them outside yeah. of the people that we grab as our own fans. So that was just a stack of razor blades falling in the background. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. It's spooky season. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was question three. Um, well, okay. Yeah. What what unique factors would you say set this organization organization apart from others? Hmm. Okay. It's a small business. It's a small business. A painfully small business. <laughs> <laughs> so what sets it apart? Um, you know, there are mall skate shops out yeah. there. I'm sure anyone that's had experience with a mall skate shop is like, what in the hell? These people don't know what they're talking about. Nine times out of ten, they don't. You know, like, you're not going to walk into a mall store and get really solid advice in most circumstances. And chances are you're not going to meet people who actually skateboard. You know, or, you know, the hiring process for a corporate store, as you know, is way different than hiring... You know, I hire within the skateboard community. Right. And they're usually some of the best skaters in town, but also know a lot about it. Um, The flip side of that is they're not trained in selling. Yeah. Or merchandising or much of anything. But they know skateboarding, and I think that sets us apart, you know. And I think because of that, too, because skateboarding is so, like, in the streets Mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it, it's a lot like music or hip-hop art punk rock you know Mm -hmm. it's like it's a subculture so it's like happening on a level where you really have no other option than to be entangled in that culture yeah and i think that's where we're that's why we're always ahead of the brands and what's going on in skateboarding versus a mall store is like chasing those things yeah and go this uh data shows that we should get this uh fucking awesome brand <laughs> and they can't carry it because it has a bad word in it's right. name. but like you can carry but it. i can carry it but also there's tons of brands that that those mall chains are chasing and they're just like no we don't want we don't want to be in that and and that's because they're small core they have some sort of spirit to them or some sort of a love of the sport that they i just called it a sport punch me in the face <laughs> <laughs> They have some sort of love of skateboarding that uh-huh. they don't want to give away to corporate re- retail. Yeah. And, and so those those corporate stores just can't get it, can't carry it. So, yeah. Cool. Um, what, what values or philosophies does this organization represent? I think we kind of covered that just now. Sort right? of, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like we, this past weekend we had an, an art show with hip hop and slam poetry and all this sort of stuff. You know, it's like to, it's hard sometimes. Like I get worn down on the, um, on the events and stuff too, because imagine working all week, working all day, having the stresses of everything. And now I gotta be here till 1am, you know, it's like, ah, but I think like you do that for the community because for one, they're your friends most of the time. Um, and for two, that's what's happening in your city, like on the small grassroots level. You know, it's like if anybody's gonna blow up or or really come up with anything new, mm-hmm. it's coming from the subculture in the city, yeah. and that's part of our values is to support that. And and like I said earlier, it's like skateboarding and hip hop and art and punk rock music or anything like that. It just has like kind of the same values because it's the same struggle (laughs) down in the streets and you know it's like i don't know i mean it's like supporting local in a sense yeah 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 what everybody's like trying or what a lot of people are big on right well it's also created that it's almost made local retail this counterculture yeah uh thing because like dude we know a lot of the business owners down here that are local and None of us make a lot of money, you know, like everybody's like just here because they love it or, you know, they just w- had a dream and they're trying to chase it. Yeah. And that's what a local business owner does. 
And uh, corporate retail has really made it hard and really kind of turned what used to be the backbone of America it was like local business, yeah. like really turned it into a counterculture almost, mm -hmm. which is tough, you know, yeah. like you don't want to think about it that way. But yeah, lo local business is harder than ever. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, let's see. Uh, how are decisions made in this organization? Okay. Team effort. This oh. is this this is where I um I look I fault myself a lot because mm -hmm. my management skills are terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really hands off, and when we make decisions, especially now, I think when I I think early in the business I was like more like, you know, in my late twenties, early thirties. I'm like. This is it. I know it's right. You don't know. Like this is the decision. decision. This is the decision. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm older, not only do you see other people's perspectives a lot more, but you um, you also understand that hey, you're in skateboarding, and forty five year old dude isn't quite as knowledgeable as somebody who's in their early twenties. You know, like yeah, it almost seems like the birth of the next cultural whatever. Mm -hmm movement is is on those 20 something shoulders you yeah. know they're the ones that are in touch like i mean i saw post malone for the first time the other day i'm like that's what that dude looks like i don't know anything about this shit you know like, I, I am bad. i am very uh disconnected from what's going on in pop culture now mm -hmm. you know so like as far as decision making, I think it's more of a team effort. I'm like, what do you guys think? What do we need to do? Like, a lot of it lately has been, do we need to chase more like corporate retail strategies? Mm -hmm. And of course, everyone's like, ah, ah. you know, like I can't get a solid answer. So that may be a decision that I just bring in here myself and just be like, okay, we're counting customers, we're counting mm -hmm. dollars per hour, we're counting all this stuff because we need to categorize and see where we need to focus our efforts. Right. So usually it's a team effort. It's more of a democratic mm -hmm. process. Even with the skate team, it's like, hey, what do you guys think? Should we add this guy? Nine times out of 10, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we get some opposition on things, but yeah, but maybe, team effort. Team effort. Yeah. Cool. Um, Let's see. What, I feel like this one's sort of same. What basic assumptions or beliefs would you say are shared and supported by people in this industry or organization? This is the question that I was kind of confused about, but read, read it again. What is, sorry, what basic assumptions or beliefs would you say are shared and supported by people in this industry or organization? In the industry, I would think that the basic assumption is, is it, if you're opening a skate shop, you probably really, really love skateboarding because the assumption is if you're coming into it, mm -hmm. you're not going to make a ton of money. Yeah. Even, even on the, the, the other side of skateboarding where the big, the big brands, you know, it's like if you're in skateboarding, it's like, man, I want to design websites for real skateboards mm -hmm. and you're working for real. Yeah. Well, real skateboards isn't going to be able to pay you as much as like Silicon Valley valley whatever solutions you know it's like yeah they're they're just there's not a lot of money in skateboarding except for a few people so i think that basic assumption is is that we're all in the same struggle together mm -hmm. and you came here for a reason yeah that's why it's like when when a parent comes in and was like oh we're gonna we're gonna open up a skate shop for little johnny across town i'm like why so <laughs> Well, we can get discounts. I'm like, do you know? Like, you're going to get save $9 on a skateboard <laughs> for your kid, but you're going to go into business to do to, to save $9? Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So, the, I think that, I don't know. In the industry, I think that across the board, it's like always been kind of like, you're in it for the love or you're not going to stick around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did you personally become interested in this field? Well, like I said, I can't remember not having a skateboard. Yep. Um, I had this little, I have, I have a exact copy of this skateboard at my house, this pl orange plastic banana board. 
And I honestly don't remember not having it. I remember pushing it on my knees down a dirt driveway when my dad lived in the middle of the country. I remember like having it at a house that in my childhood memory that I only remember as the greenhouse. I have no idea where it was, but I remember in the driveway having that board. I remember pushing around the apartments growing up mm -hmm. on this, but I didn't know what skateboarding was. And so um, once I figured out what skating was, it was just, that was it. That's pretty much all I saw. It was tunnel vision. Like I was taking Taekwondo and stuff. I'm like, yep. I'm out of this. Mm -hmm. I got that's eaten up into my Saturday, and I was like, and then like had all this Star Wars stuff. I like traded all my Star Wars stuff for skate stuff. You know, it's like so. I think it just made sense. Like I lived in Australia in the '90s. That's when I or late '80s, early '90s. That's when I I went to high school there, and I brought like 40 boards and a bag of trucks and wheels, all used, and I would sell it to get by. You know, so like when I was living in Salt Lake City and I'm like screen printing t-shirts for another company or embroidering t-shirts for another company, I was just like, man, what am I going to do? Like yeah. I've been skating for so long. So I just, uh, <clears throat> that's how I got into it. I'm just like, I wanted to start a magazine or I wanted to start a skateboard brand or great <laughs> or, or whatever. So I just got into it because of that. Yeah. And wish that maybe I had a little more business experience and because I was terrible in school too yeah. I barely made it through high school because I was skateboarding all the time or mm -hmm. I was bored in mm -hmm. high school so I think it just it was really the only thing I knew what to do was like start something to do with skateboarding yeah so yeah cool um what do you do in a typical work day or work week I said this earlier kind of joking is get distracted mm -hmm. and that is what I do I literally get distracted all day really good at getting and, distracted. and I've been man I've been pretty not bitter I, I've been in a weird place lately and so I know that people stop by all the time to hang out or say what's up or talk or whatever and I'm like Ugh, and I just shut down and I feel so bad yeah <clears throat> but it's like when you're you're battling you know, like struggling through a bad work week or whatever, and everyone that stops by the store, or everyone that calls the store is for you. Yeah. So I get distracted a lot, mm -hmm. you know, so I get distracted by phone calls, I get distracted by, you know, people just stopping by to say what's up, and theoretically you're supposed to give those people your time, you know, they're your customers, they're your supporters, they're your friends, they're your family, you know, but, yeah. but sometimes I'm wishing like, I'm at work. I can't just stop work and I, I can't go to your to work and yeah. hang out. <laughs> so I do get distracted a lot, but there's a ton of emails and I hate emails. So, and most, all my reps are probably like, he doesn't read his emails. I totally just go, don't need it from them. Don't need it from them. Don't. <laughs> so I don't read a lot of them, yeah. but, but then it's side hustles. Like, you know, like running a skate shop, you're not getting a ton of foot traffic, a ton of like skateboard sales so I'm like printing t-shirts or yeah. trying to trying to make money somehow some other way like mm -hmm. dumping product on some weird app or yeah you know so that's usually what I've been doing a lot lately is side hustles to keep the doors open yeah. you know so mm -hmm. um but other than that it's just like I said the guys are pretty self-starters you know I'm like all right, we got you started on this, continue on that, and, yeah. they'll, and they'll just come in and keep going. So, right. so yeah, I, I pretty much just uh, phone calls, emails, T-shirts, research. I'm always trying to read and yeah. figure out, like, what's going on, but usually it's a dead end. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, let's see. Um, can you leave... Work at work, or do you take yeah. work home with you? Yeah, so that's the thing about being a business owner is you don't, you can't ever leave work, work, at, work. at work. It, I, it comes home it with me all the time. Every, everywhere. And that's something you guys should think about. Um, if you, you want to like start your own if, business. If you want to start your own business, or every time you come in and ask for a discount, remember that 
I'm paying your friends. <laughs> Don't ask for a if discount. You, if it's so hard for me to pay everyone, if you ask for discounts, that that hurts my ability to pay your friends. <laughs> and like, so when you're paying, when you have people on payroll, you don't just worry about your paycheck. You you worry about every damn like you worry about. Damn, dude, Irving's not gonna be able to eat right. this week. Rice know? gotta pay rent. <laughs> Rice has to pay rent. Irving's gotta eat. You know, like Kari's got a thousand other jobs he's gotta go to. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and school on top of that. So, I don't know. Uh, well, yeah. I do it, this for free. So yeah, don't this is <laughs> free enter. I don't worry about her at all. <laughs> I'm the exception. <laughs> so I, it is a lot of worry at home. I, I definitely um, took home work and, and just even when things are going real smooth, I, I'm like, man, I, I just, hmm, how to put this? Retail typically is like a part-time job you do when you're in school, yeah. you know. But like, I want to be able to offer something to my employees because. Dude, who wants to let go of an Irving, yeah. you know, or, or Rice, like, right. or Kari? Like, everybody's so talented, mm -hmm. and they can bring so much of a different thing to your store. It almost is like they're part of the life of the store. So, fuck, I wish I could pay them enough, yeah. you know, to, like, actually be a career. And, and there is enough money out there to do that. We mm -hmm. just need that support from people to, like... Yeah, I just, I wish that they could uh, go home at the end of the week and like I'm writing the paychecks and right. I could be like, that's solid. That I is like a that. solid paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, retail's tough. Um, skateboarding's tough on top of that. And so work comes home with me a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. We'll do the, what do you find most rewarding about your work? Dude, so many things that I, that we are into that Blue Tile has its hands in are so cool. And, and it's just like, I mean, the fact that I, I met a lot of my heroes, you know, like growing up, I, and I don't, I didn't just meet them. I'm like, I talked to them on the phone, you know, I like text with them or. You know, like last summer I went on a trip with Donnie Barley. If you'd have told my teenage self that I was going to go on a trip with Donnie Barley, just him and I in a van, I'd have Freaking died out. in place. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like, so I, I love that. It is my youth. It's an evolution of my youth. And it's like everything, like, look at all this fucking awesome artwork everywhere. And like the people I get to hang out with. And like, I was thinking about this the other day where... You know the group the group of people I hang out with gets it's kind of just always younger. You know it's like twenty that twenty five something range. You know like twenty, but like those are the people that are coming in and stirring up the city. Yeah. And those are my friends. You know mm -hmm. and it's just like sometimes it gets really lonely because like my older friends all have kids and they're all doing their shit and like I don't hang out with them anymore and I don't blame them. But and then I'll. But it's cool. I've got great, new, creative, awesome friends. But at the same time, there's like that disconnect between... And we keep you young. That's right. So, yeah, the camera just stopped recording, so I don't know what we missed, but... Hopefully not that yeah. much. I don't know. I think that was it, right? So, let's move on. What do you find least rewarding? Paying the bills. <laughs> the money aspect. The money aspect. Every asshole that comes in the door, and I'm going to say asshole, when you walk in the door and you're like, yo, what's on sale? Or can you give me a deal? Like, I know that you're a consumer. And I know that's what you're programmed to think. Like, I only buy deals. But, like, when you're only paying for things on sale, you're not supporting anything. You're not supporting the brand that you think you like. You're not supporting the establishment that you think you're supporting. You're just buying some closeout clearance stuff. It helps, sure. Yeah. But nobody's making money off that. So it's really just, like, you swept some of the cobwebs out, you know, like, I, that's maybe a little bit derogatory, but that is very stressful when you're like, like I said, I want my employees to make decent money. I want myself, you know, like I've been struggling for 17 years. Like I want to 
not struggle, mm -hmm. you know? So it gets really frustrating that people don't only um, ask for deals, they will price shame you. And like, that just gets so old mm -hmm. because we don't set prices. That's so, that is something that people don't understand. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna shop around. If you're buying new product, it costs the same everywhere. 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 Mm -hmm. Whether it's fifty nine ninety nine, fifty nine ninety five, or just flat sixty bucks. Yeah. It's the same because the company sets the price. Right. MSRP, manufacturers, manufacturers suggested retail price. Mm -hmm. And then there's another thing called map pricing, minimum advertise price. So you can't advertise for less than the MSRP until a certain sale date. Right. So if you're buying stuff on sale, nine times out of 10, every store has marked it down at the same time as well. You know, so like shopping around is kind of a myth, but just, I don't know, just uh, low balling everything. I've had moms pull up in nice ass cars that cost more than my damn house asking for discounts because they can't afford it. I'm like, yes you can. And it's not that much. Right. My skateboard's been $150 complete for 30 something years. The price hasn't changed. Yeah. So yeah, that's my least rewarding part is, is, uh, just, I guess feeling underappreciated and, yeah. and people just thinking you're here to hook them up, and, you know? Yeah. I, guess I was going to say like taking advantage. Yeah, sense. exactly. You're taking advantage of. Yeah. And, and then the other thing is, is if you don't make someone happy enough, they can, Go online and talk. And bash you. Yeah, give you some shitty review or something because you didn't return their shoes that they walked around and dog shit in, which is a real story. You know, someone Come brought on. their shoes that they've worn around for weeks and they weren't weren't comfortable, so they wanted to return them with dog shit on the bottom, literally. And I refused to do it, and they wrote us a bad review. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so I got the review, I got that review taken down. Okay. But still, it yeah. was up before a while before I noticed it was there. That's ridiculous. So yeah, that's that's the least rewarding part is um, if you own a business, people are automatically think you're loaded and they just want to take from you. But and I'm like trying to give to the community like you could give back to us as well. You know, it's like it's a give and take. You know, um, recently. Someone said uh, that we weren't doing enough for the skate community, and I'm just like so financially burdened. Yeah. And I'm like, we literally this year wrote a check, not just me, but the organization that me and some friends started for it now, wrote a check for $14,000 to put lights at our skate park. And I'm not a person to, to like brag and put that everywhere, and like, but I wish maybe that I was like, a look at me type of person mm. because I will definitely talk about it and say look we did do this yeah. but I wish it was didn't have to be in response to you're not doing anything I'm like right. yes we put lights at the park yeah that was 14 grand yes we helped build the DIY spot mm -hmm. yes we're doing shows and art shows and supporting skaters art and all this sort of stuff we yeah. do a lot of things being underappreciated definitely the worst part of the job you mm -hmm. know um, so much but Y'all appreciate Dave. Come on. I know a lot of people do. I got a really <laughs> great, like it changed my day, Justin Morgan. It, uh, he just told me a story about how he was headed down the wrong path and he knew it and he was getting in trouble and he was getting into things that he didn't want to get into and he didn't get into specifics. But like, he's like, you know what? I'm going to buy a skateboard and I'm going to change my life. And he did and he did it and he's, thanked me for it and he's well he's hurt right now but he's skating and he's and like dude that made me that changed my whole day yeah you know it's like so Hearing things so thank you justin that really was super awesome to hear and, and i needed it so because sometimes you just god people are people suck. people are mean as people, fuck. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> people can be mean and uh yeah it's that's i don't know I, it's crazy too because it can be your friends and you're like, man, you know the struggle we're going right. through. I don't know. Be nice to everybody. Be nice. Be yeah. kind. That's it. Um, so we're on our last question. Oh boy. <laughs> and it's the 
Easiest question. Um, what is the typical dress code here at Yo, Wichita? I know I look a little <laughs> homeless, but being homeless is okay. <laughs> that is the dress code. Please don't be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been a hell of a year. Um, yeah, no dress code. Just wear what you want. Um, wear a blue tail shirt. Yeah, that'd be great. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. No dress code. I, I, don't, I don't even... Uh, this is a hundred shirt. I don't even carry the hundreds anymore. Sorry, guys. I'm wearing a dare shirt. That's right. Hmm. We should talk about that <laughs> off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I Minocent. I don't know. know. <laughs> That's it. Um, there we are. Yeah. That was the interview. It was super quick. What about what oh, about you? What is what does this internship oh, mean for you? So, um, I'm in school for at USC for um, retail management and a minor in business. Um, so I'm doing business things, learning Smart. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I was excited to do it here because you know you do own this business and you started it from the ground up. Yeah. And hopefully one day that's what I'm gonna do, um, long-term goals. Yeah. So, um, you know, just getting some advice from you, I'm like, how it began and like what the struggles of it are and right just putting all of that into perspective for me well what about this like what do you think about um the struggles that you hear from me and also what you're learning in school when you're learning something it's kind of like retail in a way that like by the time the schools know what to teach you mm -hmm. it's moved past that you know what i mean yes so, like, the struggles are going to be way different than you're being taught right now. Right, yeah, So Later on. So, what do you think, you, what are you learning from your classes? What kind of struggles are you learning about that you think would help you overcome business? And what kind of struggles do you think exist that you may maybe don't think about or maybe not talk about? Well, so, I guess whenever I just personally think about what I want to get into... My struggle is that, I mean, even just like beginning, starting somewhere. I mean, right. I know I could start like an Etsy page yeah. or something and sell vintage clothes and right. or repurpose vintage clothes or whatever and start from there and then just kind of like learn as I go. But um, you could be doing that in school right now. Yeah, too. right. Yeah. yeah. And thinking about... Except I'm sort of broke. But <laughs> um, thinking about, like, or hearing the struggles that, like, you have to go through, mm -hmm. you personally, um, you don't hear that in, in, no. in your classes. Like, they yeah. don't sit there and they're like, you know, well, I started, I started my own business and, like, you know, this and this and this was terrible about it. Like, you, you don't hear right. that. You right. sort of just, like, hear the success stories. Right. So, um, that's why, I don't know, that's why it's... I think more businesses fail than succeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Um, my dad has always been the one to tell me that if, or a lot of people, whenever they start businesses themselves, um, something that really tears a business down quick is labor. Yeah. And like having to pay people. But I feel like that's, you know, that's why I feel like with what I want to do, I can just manage it on my own. Right. And not have to worry that, about having somebody else there with me um, until mm -hmm. until I was ready and able for that. That might what be the next can't... step in business. Yeah. Well, actually, that's what's happening right now where you have, like, these creators mm -hmm. and they're, like, super good at social media, super mm -hmm. good at YouTube or whatever, Instagram, yeah. and they create brands around it, mm -hmm. you know, or merch around it, and they're yeah. successful that way. I think that that business model is going to have its time as well. So, like, what's going to be the next one? But <clears throat> that's kind of what I was getting at when I asked you those questions. Mm -hmm. Like, me coming up, I was like, when the internet, when everybody started shopping on the internet, I was like, I don't want to sell them. I want to be a brick and mortar store. Yeah. I never thought, and this is, this is ignorance on my behalf, I never thought that... The internet would literally take over Just, everything. Right, right, right. You know, like, like, it wasn't a thought that 
the internet would be in your pocket yeah. or that your favorite brands would be sending you push notifications on your birthday to get a discount on some shoes with free yeah. ship or whatever, you know, it's like, right. so I never thought that. And so now I'm playing catch up. Yeah. Whereas like you, you're living in social media. Like yeah. it's always been around. But see, it's crazy though, because to me, I mean, same. I like necessarily wouldn't want to be online and wouldn't want to prominently be online. I would want to just have, a brick and mortar or like in my in my case it would be like a like a mobile yeah shop yeah that'd be in tight. a sense mm -hmm. um unless i just really wanted to settle down somewhere and then have like a brick and mortar but i've always been the type of person where i would rather go into a store and try things on or see right. what they have rather than just sit online and like scroll through things and like right. order online you know what, what I mean? do you think that for people in your age demographic, do you feel like you're an anomaly in that sense? Or yeah. do you think most people want to go into a store? I No, I definitely have seen. Right. And and I, I feel like I've definitely had classes where we've talked about, you know, are you a, the type of person that goes into the store? Right. Or do you just go right to online and like yeah, yeah. look at And most people go online. And just yeah, like yeah. we'll order whatever they needed to order, and then mm -hmm. like I guess if it was wrong, go to the store or send it back. Right. But like. Which is funny because we have people that will buy stuff from the van store online, and then think they can return it here because we carry vans. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -mm. no, that's not. No, how that's works. not how it works. And yeah. people do get offended that you won't take the return. It hasn't happened in a while, but it definitely is an issue. It's like but, beer. But that's weird that you are like that in this day and age. I know. You know, like most people don't care. They just, I, I can't imagine buying something that I don't actually see. Same. And yeah. I, I, I mean, I have no problem with, I've been in class before and just sat there and scrolling on websites and stuff and looking, but I can't bring myself to just right buy it there. I want to go to the store and see if they have it. and Right. I don't know, I guess, like, talk to the people, too, and, like, right. get their opinions yeah. on things. And... Well, here's another thing, is, like, photographs, I mean, if you take, if you look at everyone's Instagram, it's, like, it looks like everybody has the best life. Yeah. Oh, everyone posts the best moments. No one posts when they Every laughs. photo of a product is going to do its best to look good as well. Oh, for sure. So, I've, as a buyer... A lot of times I will hold the product in my hand and go this is dog shit and not want it yeah but people will see the photos on social media or you know in advertising or whatever of course the photos are gonna look great mm -hmm. because they want to sell the product yeah but without holding it they don't know so like I try to be that that one gateway that filters out some of the bullshit but the problem with the internet is is like Sometimes the bullshit looks really good in photos. And when you get it in your hand, you're like, ah, well, I've already got it. I'm just going to wear it. Yeah. And then maybe you'll grow to love it either way. Or maybe you love it, love it right off the bat. Yeah. But photos tell, don't tell the whole story. Yeah. You know, like you really mm -hmm. have to feel something, even if you had your eyes closed. You I know, agree. Like, I, I, I think like, because I'll go to other shoe stores. And there are shoes that we carry, like from Adidas, we have... Um, Sambas and we have Superstars and you know we have Nike Dunks and all of these shoes are upgraded versions of or, or are Chuck Taylors even yeah. you know they're upgraded versions of what you would get in an, another mall store yeah well I go to those stores and I pick them up and I'm like you know it's like a five to ten dollar price difference ours is more usually mm -hmm. but in some cases it's the same price and I can immediately pick it up and, and be like, whoa, this is way less quality than the stuff that we're selling. Mm -hmm. But it blows my mind that consumers can't tell the difference sometimes. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know. Well, funny story, actually. I had this conversation the other day. Yeah. But this is interesting. Go on. We get a shirt in and you'll feel it and you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. It's so soft. It's durable, comfy. Like... Love it. And then a couple of weeks later, we will get that same exact shirt in, or so you think, Restock. until you, yeah, 
restock and then you touch it and you're like this is not nearly as soft right it's maybe a little bit more thin and it's just like just not as comfortable right as the original shirt we had just gotten in that was yeah, yeah. new 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 so this just to be clear this is a strategy that that large retailers use um they'll get in a product that is high quality for a premium price or whatever the regular msrp and they they sell it to that first initial wave of shoppers who are usually the trendsetters if you're buying stuff when it first comes out you're like kind of ahead of the curve you're not waiting for somebody else to wear it yeah but when the restock comes in it's the same garment but the quality is lowered so they can keep the price lower and then they make more <laughs> more money off of it so it's like oh so all those people that saw so-and-so fashion blogger wearing this by the time you saw that person wearing it the second tier version of that apparel has already dropped yeah and the quality, and the is, quality less. is so much less so crazy and it's like yeah. You, yeah you only get like a certain amount of them yeah and then you'll get so many more of the lower quality one but then right. at that point the customer doesn't notice yeah the customer won't notice the customer won't notice they'll be like oh that's the shirt that so-and-so was wearing i'm gonna get that uh, one too because mm -hmm. it looks so good on exactly. blah 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 they think it's the same thing but yeah it's, yeah definitely anyway not. i don't know i guess that's it it's what wild I, um is there anything else to talk about no i'm hungry you're hungry she's gonna <laughs> eat we're done thank you guys for listening to me run my mouth for a half an hour right yeah, yeah it's been like 40 it's, minutes oh well yeah stop that yeah thanks have a nice day all the best love blue tile <laughs>